Good afternoon, everybody. Just checking the time. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's 12. I'm sorry I joined a bit late today, but I definitely wanted to be here and had to be here to chat um, to all of you who have joined. I'm going to share my screen so I can jump right into my conversation that I'm going to have today. This week's conversation, last week I did something similar, but this week we're definitely going to be focusing on municipal finance and how to tell those stories. Let me just make that a bit bigger for everyone to see. So I think the past 10 or so years I've been covering uh, municipalities in, in all kind of guises um, and using a lot of data to work through some of the stories that I want to tell and to give much more credibility to what a lot of people are saying in those specific municipalities. And I'm just gonna give you a few examples today of some of that work that has been done and where the stories came from, how did they develop and how you can use the different municipal finance resources that are out there. So as I'm saying that we're going to, from, this, from the examples that I'll be giving, I will be showing you how the stories develop, the data stories develop, because a lot of municipalities look exactly like the picture that I've just, I've just put up on the screen. And there's a host of reasons why that is. And those include where the money is being spent by that particular municipality. Just an overview of today's discussion. I will be looking, firstly, discussing um, two ways on how to approach data and stories. Um, there, there will be a section about data-driven stories and stories that are data supplemented and how you as the journalist can use either way to write these particular stories. And then I'm gonna just go through some of the main data sets that I've used over the years to focus on municipal spending and draw that all the way to service delivery expenditure and the services that are, 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 are received by the people who live um, in those particular areas. Then I'm gonna go through briefly uh, a number of stories that I've worked on, uh, stories that are data-driven and stories that are data supplemented. Uh, and then um, hopefully we'll have some questions and I'll be able to take those as well. All right, um, starting with finding your data and, and using it. Um, there's two ways, and I think I briefly touched up on the two ways last week that I have, and I think this came from a question from one of the participants who had joined last week. Um, a question was like, whether do you start with the data or do you start with the actual stories and which one is the better way? And I had explained that it depends on which stage that you are at in terms of using data. And I would say that um, for most journalists who are starting out and trying to use data and trying to, to get stories out of their data, having a story first, having a source or having somebody telling you that this is a particular issue in a particular area, whether it's a person calling you up one person saying, this is an issue in my particular area and I need you to cover it. And then you go to your news editor and your news editor says, well, this is the story of one person. We're not really talking about an actual issue here, right? Then you can use the data to say, actually, yes, this one person says this particular, there is this particular issue. Uh, and the data actually also shows that the municipality, for instance, has not been spending on water in that particular, um, in that particular municipality. Or just in comparison, because we know that we've got district municipalities and local municipalities, find a district. And in those five or four municipalities under that specific district, compare them. Is it a trend in all, in all the, uh, the local municipalities? And this person who told you about the story is your tip off and can also be your case study. And there's actually data that can back this up. A lot of service delivery issues come down to municipal spending. If anybody, any of the participants have spent some time covering municipal uh, issues and municipal elections and municipal finances, service delivery, the potholes, the running sewage in the streets, um, the RDP houses built or not built, a lot of those comes, come down to the financing. And then the second way of, of, 
of writing, of getting stories and using data to get those stories is that the data is becomes your source. And this takes a bit more time and a bit more practice with data. But I think with the kind of tools that Senef is, is putting together for journalists, you should be able to do like a comparison between municipalities. And in those outliers where it's just like, why is this municipality um, spending so much, 10 times more than any other municipality? That's where the story is. Those story, those those numbers that have escalated so increasingly over a short period of time in comparison to other areas, that's where your story is. That's where your data becomes your source. The data shows you the outliers. Then you have to go to the ground and do the journalism. You ask the questions of the data. And, and, and Ray had mentioned that some people say, well, the data is not right. The data are not right. Um, and it's, it's inconsistent. And the same way you would put questions to a source that tells you something is the same way you put questions to the data as well. You need to be able to interrogate the data and what the data is telling you. And if you get to the ground and that's not what the situation is, go back to the data, interrogate it, find out whether maybe this data was collated in a different way from other municipalities. And when you use the data as your source, you can you go back to, sorry, when you use the data as your source, you go to the communities, you speak to the community members, you find out if this thing is true and how bad is it and how do people have to deal with it on a daily basis. Then go back to the data. People will tell you other issues that, that they might have. You go back to the data and you check on those issues. Is this something that is quite rampant in other areas as well? So those two ways of using data um, uh, um, as either as a source or as to supplement or to supplement a story that you've already gotten. Keep this in mind as I go through some of the examples and talk through some of the tools that I've used and are open um, um, to, to, to you guys using as well. Um, keep those two ways in mind. And I will continue to reiterate um, whether this story was, was, was the data first and then you go and find the actual story or we got a tip off and then we use the data to supplement and confirm and broaden out the story. So my main data sets are municipal money. We've been using municipal money uh, since it first came out. And municipal money is such a great way for people to start getting into um, how to what, what municipalities are spending on, what the finances, whether they have money, whether they don't have money, what the income is in comparison to the actual financial performance. Municipal money can get you, it's, a, it's, it's quite self-explanatory, especially when you are starting with the story already. Somebody's already given you the tip of, and now you need to figure out why is this particular issue happening in this municipality? In comparison to other municipalities, what, what is the situation? And municipal money can give you that, especially because I mentioned that, that a lot of times as, as data journalists, because we've spent so many years, and trust me, it's been years, um, we spent so many years looking for this data and we kind of know where to find it now and it becomes, becomes so much more fair. We can do those co comparisons quite quickly, but starting out, and, I, and, I, and, and, and as a journalist coming in, I know how daunting it might seem. What municipal money has been able to do is to bring it down to a self-explanatory level that you can get it. And it is such a huge resource for anybody starting out, trying to understand how, what does it mean when you get a, a particular opinion from the Auditor General? What does it mean when you don't have money? How do you balance, what is the balance sheet, the income and the expenditure? And how, and what happens when you get grants instead of actual money revenue from, 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 um, from, re from taxpayers, ratepayers in that particular municipality? Municipal money assists in that. And then I use quite a lot of the Auditor General's reports, especially when, um, uh, Auditor General has the yearly uh, MFMA reports. Um, those reports um, are quite interesting in how they've evolved over the years. Um, you get your remuneration versus service delivery there. Uh, did a story years ago about who's getting paid what in the municipalities. And you can see that some municipalities are paying exorbitant amounts of money for a for a general manager of some sort. And when you call the general manager himself, about how are you getting paid all of this money? He's not even aware. And you'll find that in those municipalities, that's where service delivery is actually not happening. 
And then you can do municipal comparisons as well and, and itemized expenditures as well uh, from the Auditor General's reports. And a lot of, I think most of the data on municipal money is around from, from the Auditor General's office and um, from the records of the Auditor General. But if you want to dig, delve a little bit deeper, the Auditor General office is very open to giving you and to explaining some of, of the terms um, and, and some of the, 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 the comments that they make in there. And those can assist in story direction as well. And then audit reports as well, which basically tell you part of municipal money as well, they basically tell you what is the health of the municipality. And that comes with a little bit more work in terms of understanding the financial reports themselves. But a something for me that has come, and, and, and I've covered this quite, quite extensively with the Auditor General's office, is material irregularities that are noted in these audit reports. And that's something that's come about in the past two years or so. Um, material irregularities are cases that the Auditor General's office have, have picked up and they can actually give you further information about what has happened to that money. And they are further investigating and will possibly turn those over to the likes of the SIU or to the NPA or the Hawks themselves. There is a trove of stories in the Auditor General's reports about these material irregularities. And that is a story point for journalists to use. In the past, um, in the past MFMA report that the editor general had put out, I saw that very few people actually used um, these stories about material irregularities um, to build further stories about specific municipalities. It's definitely something that you guys should be looking out um, and, and using in your stories as well. All right, let's get into some of the stories that I've worked on. And I've decided to break them up into not issues, but municipalities, so that you can kind of get a, an idea of the municipality and the information that we found and, and how we got to actually publishing the story. So this specific story was based on a whistleblower, a whistleblower within the municipality who was like, there were issues in this municipality. We couldn't get this. We couldn't get these particular services from the municipality because the municipality had to pay these ghost workers or all these new workers at a particular point in time. I think it was run about uh, um, June, July, August of that, of, of that year where the ANC went to Nazrek. And this um, source was told us that these jobs, all these new jobs were connected to the, the ANC's NASDAQ elections. So the whistleblower tells us that, and then now we have to use data and to, we have to use our journalistic skills to confirm the details that this person has told us about. That took us yeah, a couple of weeks, actually. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks back and forth, free state, talking to lots of people. But the story, yes, the story is important as, as, jobs for votes, scandal rocks the ANC and getting comment, all of that. But it makes it much more, it gives a depth to say, actually, what is also going on in this municipality? What services are people not getting? And in the story, we've quoted people who talk about, well, I, I haven't gotten this service. And the municipality, the last time it even came to check our, our drains or our sewage systems or whatever, there's, there's, there's feces running down the street. So you connect this huge scandal that we've been able to find to how the municipality has been spending its money and therefore services not being delivered to this particular municipality. And I think a lot of people, but so many times about Maluti Apofong municipality and a lot of the financial strain that's there. And we wanted to bring that out into in, in this particular story. I think right at the, big, at the end, it says five things about Maluti. And we go into some of those financial issues that Maluti has been having and yet it continues to do this kind of corruption in that municipality. So if you remember at the beginning, I said, I would explain to you how a story would start with a tip off that has got nothing to do with data and how we would then use data to supplement that story and make it even stronger. And that's one of these, the, the examples. Liquid municipality, local municipality um, is another fun favorite of mine. <laughs> Uh, and we've been covering a couple of stories we've done in the municipality, and I think numerous other journalists have also covered what has been going on at the Val, at the Val River, and it is just a complete eyesore. This is one of the most beautiful places, or it used to be one of the most beautiful places in this country. But what's going on at the Val River is that feces are being pumped, sewage is being pumped, live sewage pumped into and leaks into the Val River. So my 
thought process was, okay, I want to do a, a story around the environment. And I've, I've, I've been reading a lot of these stories, but I want to know what is going on myself as the journalist. And I ended up going to the Val River to find out what's going on and started, started speaking to the community members. And then in that, so it was me wanting to know more about this. It wasn't the data driving me to there. Um, we get there and we start talking to people and we see, the, I, I'd never been to the town myself, but I start to see how there's no, the robots are gone. Stop signs are gone. The roads, potholes in the middle of the town, never mind what's going on at the Val River. So this to me is already speaking to the inadequacies around financial spending and what is supposed to be happening. So after seeing all of this and speaking to the residents there, there we have that story. We have to come back and start tracking how much money the municipality is spending or not spending? Where is it spending it? How is it falling through the cracks? And in us asking those questions from the data and sending those questions to the municipalities, people started telling us, oh no, you also, you don't know this as well. Because if we just send questions just around, why is the sewage being pumped into the Vol River or these community members just say this. Now we're asking more in-depth questions because we have those financial reports. We've gone through uh, how much money they've spent here and there and why, and, and yet you can't see that on the ground. So then the municipality has to answer to those direct questions. It's not people's feelings anymore about this issue. The data shows that you're not spending money where you're supposed to be spending money, only to find out that the municipality has been splurging on a host of other things. And this also comes through from the data and also from the sources that we're getting because of the kinds of questions that we're asking about. Next question, Kajisano Molobo Municipality. Now this one came from the other end, from the actual data. The data was telling us that there's a whole lot of poor um, communities out there, but there's a weird, there's a weird um, line item. And I think this came about, I think I was playing around with the, with, the, with the AG's data and just looking at municipal reports and finding like interesting line items outside of my last example that I will be giving um, consultants. And then I found this entertainment um, line item and it, it kind of shocked me that a lot of these poor municipalities were parting it up. So I started then collecting a lot of these um, municipalities and that specific line item of entertainment. And then sort of comparing those municipalities and how much they're actually spending on service delivery. And you find that a lot of the worst municipalities are spending crazy amounts of money on this entertainment. And of course, we went to the municipalities and we asked them, what is this entertainment? Are we talking sandwiches? Are we talking Beyonce coming to dance for, for the municipality? What are we talking about to get more details? Um, because those are not uh, part of, of, of the municipal reporting. But then you compare to what the service delivery is in those municipalities. You compare to how much they spend on service delivery. And you find that municipalities entertainment spending far exceeded not even the, all the money, it's just the income from taxpayers in that particular area. And so taxpayers are paying their rates and taxes, you're spending them on these lavish events, whatever these municipalities are doing, and these taxpayers are not getting what they're supposed to out of these municipalities. Then the last example, everybody has talked about, um, spoken a lot about um, um, consultants, consultants, and I've and I've covered the consultants issue o over a number of years, and we, we've been looking at different uh, municipalities and why they're spending on consultants. This particular year, when we did this particular story, it was a data-driven story. We started off with the data because we know that there's an issue with consultants, but we wanted to find out which municipalities are spending the most with consultants, and then you find that those municipalities that are spending so much on these consultants, their work, you can't even see the work that these consultants have done. And a lot of them are to, to, to report to the Auditor General's office. Municipalities have CFOs and a host of other people under the CFO's office, yet more money still has to be sent, spent from outside consultants. And then how does that affect services at the end of the day? How does that then affect how municipalities spend on the most basic of services that are needed in that municipality? Because now you're spending billions and hundreds of millions of rands on different consultants to do jobs 
that the people within your municipality are supposed to be doing. Those are the kinds of stories, whether you're starting from the data side of things and just take an annual report, find just one municipality's annual report, find a line item that's of interest to you. Um, and then start following that up in a, in a small, in a small uh, region. You don't have to look even at all the municipalities uh, in the country. But once you start understanding that you can use data that way, just to one municipality, compare it with five others. What, what is the trend um, in, 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 in all five municipalities? Or going it the other way of getting a tipple and going to find the data to corroborate and bolster your particular story. I see that we do might have questions, uh, but Rebecca, I think I'm going to hold it there and very happy to answer any questions from yeah. Miss Luluki there. <laughs> Super, thanks so much for this. Um, it's really interesting. And there's some very interesting um, conversation going on in the chat and some additional resources. I know Ray has just posted some stuff about spending on capital projects and a water quality tool that relates to what you were just talking about. So anybody who wants to grab those, please go ahead and do so. Um, one of the things that was really interesting that you mentioned that relates to some of the earlier presentations was this sort of like the data can be inaccurate, right? Like, or it can be perceived as inaccurate or it's inaccurate at the time. There were some comments earlier about like, hey, this is data from a year or two ago. It's not in real time. And talking about wouldn't it be great if we could really see it in real time. And this can happen even with a person you're interviewing who's not basing it on data, right? It's just their personal experience of yesterday or last year. Um, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that or if there's, I'm gonna open it up to, to Anton Diwe first specifically, and then if there's anybody else on the panel who would like to talk about that a little bit, a little bit more, making sure that, as I think it's important for you as the journalist, but also to clarify that in the story so that the reader can also be confident about, about the yep. data. Definitely or the source. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think I actually have, I have an example when we were looking at municipalities a while ago and looking at how much mayors and deputy mayors and um, uh, MMs and all those kinds of people were being paid. And municipality or oh, oh, Tambo, MTAT in the Eastern Cape had this guy who was being paid two million. He didn't even know what his job was about. But then when we went to these municipalities and this particular person, they're like, no, I'm not getting paid 2 million. And then they're like, well, that's not what we gave to treasury. And then we had to do this whole thing of trying to figure out, okay, where, where, where did the data, where did the data get wrong? Was it from the municipality? Was it treasury? Was it in how treasury input it for us to be able to use it? So you have to still interrogate and there will be red flags for you when the data are wrong. You, you, you will pick that up. You will know that so, man, too many people are saying this is not correct. Then you go back, where did you get the data? Who put the data together in this particular thing? Find out if there are other resources like, like the, 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 the Treasury's data. The Treasury's data is very similar to the AG's data, very similar to municipal money's data. Where is it? And possibly go back to the municipality's own annual report and see all those four reports. And is that line item stated the same? Uh, is it, is, is it, is it, um, is it different this particular year? And make sure that in the story you state that. So if there is somebody disputing it, somebody disputing it, but you feel that it is still correct because you've done that cross-referencing and made sure that there are other data sources, state that in your story. So they don't come out and say that, well, this data is wrong. But you say, in our story, we stated, however, the, this, this particular municipality is, is, is saying that they didn't pay this, they didn't pay that, they didn't do this. However, the, the treasury, which has the records of how much has been paid and so forth, states one, two, and three. So we're going with treasury's word on this. Not to say that the municipality is a lie, but this is treasury data. This is the information that we're getting from tre treasury. And on this kind of basis, treasury is, is works more with these financial flows than the, the one municipality. So you have to interrogate the data, go to other sources and see if those line items correspond with each other. And in the story, make sure it's not a, just like with your source, you would find other sources with a, with a human source, you'd find other sources or you'd speak to other people to corroborate that. And if that is disputed, you would state that it is being disputed. You would need to do that with the data as well. Thanks, Isaac, I saw you had your hand up. Did you wanna piggyback on that? Yeah, just quickly, I mean, we, what we also try and do, of course, is to link 
to link the municipal finance stories with um, with the election countdown. And what I didn't do, we just talked about how, how much mayors are paid. Have, go and have a look. The IEC yesterday released the preliminary numbers and they said they'll update it today or tomorrow. So there's about 10,000, just over 10,000 seats to be contested around the whole country. There's about 60,000 candidates of which only, by the way, only one less than 1,000 are independent. But 60,000 candidates competing for that 10,000 seats. So it would be great in, um, in municipalities to go and do the story now. How many candidates are running for how many seats in a particular uh, municipality and how much do they get paid? I mean, that, that I think is just a nice story to do right now. Thanks. I don't think the candidates list has been finalized. Um, it's still now being scrutinized. So it's been closed, being scrutinized by the IEC, who will then... So I, I, I think what, what you're saying, each event that happens, if you go to the IEC website, you will find a countdown to the election. So even though the election date is in doubt, um, the election had to be declared because each is a step along the way that's got to be done. There's got to be um, events have got to ha happen. So the, they, the candidates have got to be, lists have got to be submitted. They've got to be scrutinized. There's a final list. Each, my point is, is each one of these events, and you'll find that timetable on the IEC website, is a story. Each one of these, as the election counts down, each one of these mandatory events is a story. Yeah, can I just can I just say that I've had experience of reporting on um, municipal managers and CFOs' salaries in the municipalities, and what happens sometimes is the line item in a budget will be for the office, so it won't be the salary of the individual. So it will cover things like secretaries. Um, and other expenses. That's one thing that can happen. And also, sometimes it will cover like the car, you know, that goes with the, 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 the perks. So you have to interrogate that and find out. Because, I mean, I had the similar experience, you know, said to the CFO, but you're earning this huge amount of money. And he said, no, not at all, you know. Uh, so, yeah, one does have to look very in, in, in a lot of detail um, at, at what is actually being spent. Thanks. Thanks for everybody's um, perspective on this. Look, I mean, I feel like with one question, we can actually get into so much detail here as well, right? With with each of the, which each with each presentation, we see how we can go more and more in depth. This is part of the reason why we're doing this as a series, being allowing people to have many different options of different ways to come in. Once again, like coming in using the data early on in your reporting later, have it be integrated in different different kind of ways. Um, I want to make sure that we have um, some time just to to cover the um, just to let you know about what those additional um, workshops or rather webinars are going to be coming up. And we um, unfortunately don't have time to get to all of the questions that were answered here today. But what we will do is we're going to take our, all the questions that were unanswered in the chat and give our panels a chance to respond to them in email. We're going to be sending you email with links to the replays from today, as well as the, um, the slides that people shared and the, um, the links, like the clickable links, all the resources that are here. We want you to take these and implement them um, and apply them to your stories in your newsrooms. Um, I've just put a link to the evaluation form to give some feedback for today. Again, if you've got extra questions, things you want to make sure that get covered in, in subsequent sessions, this is the place to let us know. We'll send you a link to that as well. Um, we do have coming up in September um, dates to be confirmed, but just to give you like a little teaser of the kind of topics we're going to be covering, the role of the media during elections, disinformation during elections, and the safety of journalists both on and offline. Those who are expecting to be in September will let you know the dates real soon. And also telling stories with election data, data will also be coming up. I think that one might be coming a little bit later. Um, I want to give a super big thank you to all of you. I know that this is like a big thing to take this time out of your day and to be here live with us. Thank you to the um, the panelists who came live and to the attendees, those of you who are here. If you've got a final 
thought, final takeaway from today. We'd love to hear that as well. If you wouldn't mind just dropping that in the chat, if you've been listening for the last two hours and you've got something you say, here's the thing I'm going to be able to apply or use or investigate more, please let us know what that is. And um, I will actually ask each of the, the um, panelists, give us that one last sentence. Maybe you want to reiterate something that you've already said or um, uh, give us sort of a final thought about what we've talked about here today. I know Atendiwe, you're about to get to a meeting. We're just at the top of the hour. Can we can we start with you first, please? Definitely, definitely. No, thank you guys for um, the invite and the work that Setup is doing. Um, I'm super excited about data journalism and I would love so many more people to be. And it only takes just starting to do that work. It's just starting to do that work. Look at that annual report. There's so many stories. And as journalists, we want to tell the stories. Let the data help you tell those stories. Um, thank you so much for everyone for this for today.